All right, so what have we looked at so far? We've introduced the basic idea. I've given you uh, these definitions from a geometric point of view and also from an algebraic point of view. And then we've seen how you can use that algebraic definition uh, to prove some things. You know, we can prove why even functions are called even functions and the same for odd functions. So now I want us to think about how to combine these symmetries um, because this is where things start to get really interesting and prickly, right? Um, this is a function here which I, I actually picked out because a student asked me about this function and what happens when you integrate this. Now, this comes back to the big idea. Why do I, what do I mean when I say uh, it can be useful to know what the, uh, what the symmetry of a function is? Well, before I reveal what this particular function is, let me give you an example of what I mean by useful, right? Suppose I were integrating this function and from memory the question was asking for something like this and I'm integrating from negative 2 to 2. Now if I were integrating this particular function, then even without knowing what the function is, because I know it has odd symmetry, the uh, left hand side is the negative version of the right hand side, you can see that this area down here is going to be exactly the same size or the exactly the same magnitude as this area on the right hand side but the difference is its sign will be opposite. It'll be negative instead of positive. So when I add these two together, because they're the same size, this integral from negative two to two, it'll be zero. Like I don't even know what this function is, but I still know that the integral will be zero, the definite integral, I should say. In a similar way, if I come back to this guy over here, if I wanted you to integrate, again, let's uh, choose a helpful color here. If I wanted to integrate, say from, I think the value I chose before was negative three, all the way up to three. Okay, if I wanted to know what this uh, value was equal to, well again, I could integrate from negative three to three, but I can take advantage of the symmetry of this function by saying, well, hold on a second, this area on the left-hand side will be identical in size, and in this case, also in sign, to this part of the area over here. They're the same. So instead of going from negative three to three, I could actually go from zero to three, and if I just integrate this part, well, that was really, really fat. I didn't mean it to be that big. If I just do this part over here, from zero to three and then double it, I'll get the total area anyway. And generally integrating and having one of my boundaries be zero is really nice and convenient because um, often things simplify out very, very nicely when I'm substituting in zero. So this is the whole point of it, right? Now, this is the question that we um, were given and I instantly rec it, recognized it as an odd function, even though this was the actual definition of the function. Now, the question is, how did I know that? And I'm going to illustrate that by telling you about combining symmetry. So let's start with what happens if you are adding two functions together. If you're adding two functions together, let's suppose we'll let um, two functions, let's call them um, u of x and v of x. Let's suppose both of them are odd. So if you have two odd functions, and if you have some new function which is made up of adding those two functions together, so u of x plus v of x. What do we know about this new function over here if we know that the two components were odd? What can we say about this? Well, let's just test it out and see what happens. If I say, uh, what happens when I put in negative x into here? That's how I can test anything to do with symmetry. Well, this is gonna give me uh, u of negative x plus v of negative x. Just a straight substitution, everywhere I saw x, I will put in negative x. But here's the thing, because I know that u and v are odd, that's how I introduced them in the first place, I know some things about u of negative x and v of negative x. If I go all the way back up to my algebraic definition, this is the part that's relevant to me here, right? Um, this f of negative x is equivalent if my function is odd, to negative f of x. These two things are interchangeable. So therefore, with my u's and my v's down here, here we go, I can substitute each of those, once I fix my wonky equals sign, for a negative u of x and a negative v of x. So there's a substitution I can do because I know that these functions are odd. I can only do that because of that reason. Now hold on a second. 
I've got two negative things here, so I can factor out a minus sign like so. That leaves me with u of x plus v of x inside the brackets once I've factored out that negative. And when I look at u plus v, that's the function that I started with up the top here, right? That is y of x by definition. So I have negative y of x on the right hand side. On the left hand side, which hasn't changed since I did the substitution, I've got y of negative x. Now, what does this mean? Well, this is the algebraic definition we were having a look at. This means that y is odd. If you add together two odd functions, you will get another odd function. And again, I'll leave it to you to um, try and prove if you have two even functions that you start with or any number, like I could have five or six or seven. If you add up a bunch of even functions, you'll get another even function as a total. Okay, so that's to do with addition. What about with multiplication? So let's bring this guy down over here. Now multiplication's a bit trickier. And so before we tackle uh, this proof, uh, let's just think about a concrete example. So if I had, uh, again, let's, let's call out our, our u and our v here, the two component functions as it were. Uh, and let's think about uh, if we were multiplying two odd functions together, like say x cubed is an odd function and x to the power of five is also an odd function. What happens when I multiply these two? u of x times v of x. What's the result going to be? Well, in this case, just using my index laws, it'll be x to the power of three plus five, which is eight. So this new result, the product, is an even function because eight's an even index. So I'm expecting here, when I multiply two odd functions together, I will get an even function out. Well, let's just test that out. If u and v are odd, and then when I do this y of x, which is the product of those, what happens when I put in negative x? Let's see what happens. This is u of negative x times v of negative x. That's just the straight substitution. But then I'm going to identify just like I did earlier. If these two are odd, I can substitute u of negative x for negative u of x. And in the same way, I can swap this v of negative x for negative v of x, right? So I've done this substitution because the functions are odd. But what's going on here? The two negatives are going to cancel. So you can see I just get u of x times v of x. And that's the y of x that I started with. That's a y of negative x on the left-hand side, y of x on the right-hand side. So this is the algebraic definition of an even function. Okay, now the last example I'm gonna to give to you before we look at derivatives is, well, what happens if I don't have two odd functions or two even functions? I'll let you prove what happens when you got one of those. What if they are different? So I'm gonna put this guy to one side over here. Now I wonder if you can anticipate this, right? Let's suppose if u of x is odd, like we've been having a look at, and v of x is even. Okay, what is this going to mean if I multiply these two together? Well, if I have y of x being u times v. Now I'll do my substitution, see what happens, test out the negative case. So here goes y of negative x equals u of negative x times v of negative x. I have to be careful because my u and my v are gonna behave differently since one is odd and one is even. Because of this um, u being odd, I can swap it out for a negative u of x. But with v of negative x, because v is even, by definition, it's just equal to v. v of negative x and v of x are the same because v is even. And go back to my algebraic definition to show that, right? So therefore, I've got negative u of x times v of x. Well, this is very similar if I have a look at this part here. This part here is identical to the function y of x that I started with, just with a minus sign out the front. So it's minus y of x. And then I've got y of negative x over here. Now, because multiplication here is giving us this sign, I can know therefore that y is odd when I combined, let's go for green this time, an odd and an even function. And 
just as a bonus, because division and multiplication are related here, like division is just multiplication by a reciprocal, um, if you divide an odd function by an even function or vice versa, you will get this same result, you'll get it being odd. And that brings me back to this guy. How did I know that this would be odd instantly when I looked at the function? Well, you can see here on the top here, I have a function which has, just on the numerator, a kind of symmetry. It's a bit hidden there. It's x to the power of one. That's an odd function. Whereas on the denominator, let's switch colors here, I know that this is going to be an even function because it's made up of an x squared, which is an even power. And um, if you wanted to be technically accurate here, you've got x to the power of zero here. And zero actually is also an even number. Maybe you've never thought about whether zero is even or odd, uh, but zero follows all the same rules that every other even number does, and you can test that out. So you have an even function on the denominator. This therefore is a combination between an even and an odd function by multiplication or division. And therefore the result, as you can see over here on the left hand side, is going to be odd.